we for our second keynote we're going to um we're going to mix things up a little bit and we it's, it'll still be about uh digitalization but it'll be more about uh the digitalization of interactions between people and and how people learn i'm very pleased to have um so young kang from uh, who's the founder and ceo of uh, of nobi and uh, uh also a great a great leader in terms of uh the how, how people learn and interact and uh so we, we're going to get um a, a great intro to how we can how we can all do better um in uh, in interacting in this uh digital environment uh welcome so young Thanks, John, so much for having me, and I'm delighted to be here. I know I'm, I'm, uh, you guys are talking about APIs and tech integrations, and um, and I, I'm not that expert, and so I'm excited to talk about, I think, the future of face-to-face, -face, like you said, to break things up, to pr provide the context, hopefully, for the rest of the conference around the, the digital connections um, and the human connections that are even more important now than they were before. So with that, I'm just going to kind of quick over um, and, and share my screen here. Um, and uh, and get started and leave some time for some q and I believe is, is, is how we'll do this. Is that right, John? Yep. Yeah, super. Right. Um, so, so what I'm sharing now is is really kind of a new way of thinking about reshaping digital learning and work. You know, we're living in this new low touch economy. And um, obviously there are many, many implications for, for what that means for learning and work. So I'm gonna really talk about some trends, which I think many of you already know and then with those trends, we're going to talk about some of the implications to um, our mindset skills and even decision making, making criteria on IT and how that might play a really critical role in your organizations. And so I think as everyone knows, in terms of low touch economy trends, you know, I think we all know that, that hybrid is here to stay. Right. And the way that we're working, there's really a merger and integration between work and life. You know, whether we're working from a cafe, a co-working space, our living room, or just mixing it all up or going to the office, that's here to stay. And we know that there's a lot of research showing that employees are not, they don't want to go back to work even uh, fully, even after, um, you know, COVID is, is, is over. And so I think that obviously has implications to how we think about the use of technology. And we're always connected now. I think this was always, this was, has been a problem. It's going to only get worse because now it's 24 seven with the merger of personal and work, we're always on every single device, um, whether it's your phone, your iPad, your laptop, and people are constantly moving. So I think we're gonna have to really think about what the, the implications um, that are around mental health, wellness, how we really keep people human and healthy and not just always connected, um, but also a more integration of work and life. Uh, which is another trend that we're seeing, of course, as well. The third one, which I'm quite excited about, and I think many of you will be very excited about, is we see that now employee opinions on technology are going to matter much more. So um, as this integration of work and life become more important, you know, in the past where we worked and our physical environments were maybe not as critical. But because our desks and our kitchen tables have become our office desks, then companies now are having to think about kind of the environment, even in home. And that also obviously is going to spill over in tech to, into technology and how we think about employee opinions into the tech decisions that we're making, which have some pretty significant and pretty exciting, I think, opportunities for the organization. And so I think one of the things is really about this new mindset. And, um, and a new mindset that's going to be required is really around this idea of kind of a must have um, as a social participatory experience. We already know that digital is a must have now. So I think no one is gonna question you on that. But I think the question is gonna be what type of a digital experience are we gonna have? And is a mindset that this digital is a one way conversation or is digital going to be a social participatory experience? And partially, you know, what you see me doing here is, um, and, and I think my colleagues are going to share a link, is that we don't want to have a one-way conversation, but we want to have a social participatory experience and leverage technology to evolve the type of interactions we're having on digital to be more human because we're all craving that human connection. 
and then using digital to really be a more effective way of skills-based development, which is also something that's a more global trend that's obviously been happening beyond just COVID, right? <clears throat> and so the use of technology to do that is going to be critical. Um, <clears throat> if you think about, you know, the second kind of implication is really around this idea of new skills. Now, new skills, um, you know, are really going to be now about we were so used to doing things a certain way. And traditionally, a lot of our learning and organizations have been about learn by do learn by knowing. Even what I'm doing a little bit of now is I'm talking at um, kind of a group of people and I'm, I'm conveying information to you. That is learn by knowing. And you know, the idea is that as we evolve, there's really, um, I think, an opportunity to shift into a learn by doing mode and a learn by ultimately teaching mode where anyone can create. Um, and so we're going to give everyone an opportunity to do that, you know, um, obviously not in this 20 minutes, uh, but through the link. So we invite you to participate with us so that this experience is, doesn't stop at a 20 minute conversation about learn by knowing, but it continues on through doing and teaching, because ultimately what we're trying, we're doing is building skills and we are rapidly moving into the new skills economy from the knowing economy. And that I think is a major, major trend. An implication. And, and um, we already know that 71% of organizations are choosing micro learning as a new form of learning. And so as they're doing that, we, we now recognize shorter attention spans, right? We want bite sized content at our fingertips anytime, anywhere. And so as we do that, um, we hope that learning 4.0 in the fourth industrial revolution would be a much more social humid uh, human and connected experience from kind of the digital um, earlier generations of digital which was primarily video based kind of one way engaging um, engagement and you know it, what the interesting thing is with covid we have um because you know a lot of us are zoomed out you know a lot of us are tired of watching a screen all day and so now I think it's catalyzing the opportunity for rethinking and redefining digital to be much more social and connected, which of course has implications to APIs and the technology stacks that we create in order to enable all of that, which is of course very exciting. Um, I think the last point and the implication really is around new decision-making criteria, which is probably the most interesting for everyone you know, here. Is, um, is really kind of the, the expanding of decision makers and greater influence of the end user, the employee, around those decisions on technology. I think what we're starting to see also is that instead of really thinking about these bulk heavy systems, because no one could have, con could have predicted what was gonna happen with COVID, and all of a sudden people were jumping into new technologies that they have never used before, so all of a sudden you had this rapid tech adoption and, and you didn't have time to make these long-term decisions. And so I think there's been a greater agility in terms of faster decision-making. Let's try it out, prototyping. Um, let's be more agile. Let's see what works, what doesn't work and let's adapt, which I think has been a really positive um, uh, implication of what's happened in COVID. And so what we're also seeing is instead of these large mega systems, which assume that you can design something for the next five, 10 years, it seems to be a much greater openness to new innovative solutions that are going to focus much more on API connections and integrations from an app to an, um, to an ERP system, to an LMS system, an LMS to a Salesforce through another app. And so this kind of API connections integrations are, I think, going to really become a must have uh, for for technology users now, which is quite exciting for innovation and for really thinking about the tech stack and the ecosystem quite differently, uh, which I uh, you know I assume we're going to be talking about these next couple of days. So I think there's a lot of really interesting um, changes that are happening, and as we think about kind of the ability to empower anyone now to connect and to create different types of interactions. Um, the truth is many of us, when we are learning and working, are using so many different technologies. So the ability to be able to then kind of connect those, integrate with those using API, single sign-ons, um, you know, I think is going to only enhance because now this merging, like we talked about, of work and life 
um, social media to work, the documentation, and all of those things are going to be really much more important to create greater engagement, greater effectiveness. And so we're obviously quite excited about the ability to do these links across multiple media. And I'm kind of demonstrating that to you a little bit because I didn't want you to just learn by knowing. I want you to learn by experiencing multiple medias coming to play um, and then connecting those things together. And so I think those are some of the three implications you know, that we're seeing. And, um, and, and I think the idea of being able to really create your own content and I think that idea of being able to learn by teaching and getting people to now use digital tools, not as three admins in my company are going to push all the content to me, but now I have the ability to create my own things and share that. In some strange way, we've been doing it for a while and it's called PowerPoint <laughs> or it's called um, Google Slides, where we create our own content. But even when we use PowerPoint or Google Slides, we're not really having a social interaction. We're delivering content to versus this next generation we hope is an opportunity to share content with, co-create with, get feedback um, and collaborate with. So there's best practice knowledge sharing. Um, and especially when we're in a remote environment, the need to do that is so much greater because we are craving that human connection, whether it's digital or in person. And for many remote teams now, the in-person, um, I guess, um, you know, experience is not even feasible, right? Especially if you have global teams. We have uh, employees in seven countries. Even if we wanted to have dinner together, unfortunately, right now we can't do that you know, with our colleagues in the U.S. So this idea of leveraging the technology in context to be able to create that social connection is obviously going to be much more important. Um, so, you know, I, I'd love to um, have a much more engaging kind of conversation in a Q&A versus talking, you know, at, at everyone. Um, and, and I did include here kind of some details around my bio. And if you want to ask any questions, even post this conversation, um, as well as a link to the article, you know, that, that, that talks about some of this in more detail, as well as to engage in a poll so that we can find out which area you find most challenging. And this whole idea is really more of, um, of a demonstration, if you will, around this evolution. You know, I, we, I, can't, I couldn't talk about reshaping digital learning and communications without showing, right? Because um, we're talking about it and this mindset shift that it requires is quite significant um, to be able to rethink how we do digital on all mediums. And so hopefully the challenge to everyone as you enter uh, this two-day conference is to really have an open mind and question is, you know, is, is this the best way of using digital? And how do I use digital to continue to engage and connect, equip, and enable our teams in the best possible way so that they can perform at their best? Um, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and um, I believe there's a link here. We'd love to uh, engage with you so that it's a conversation. Um, and the group board, you feel free to message me, um, you know, post this conversation as well, because we know that no, none of us have, like, the answer. We basically have, um, um, you know, many answers, right? So I know there's a question here, and then even post this conversation, you can post questions, and I or my team will definitely answer them. Uh, uh, for you. So with that, I will answer Deb's question here. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of, um, I'll stop sharing my screen here and then ask if there's any other questions um, as well. So I'll start with the one question, which was, I think that asked, which was, what is the one innovation that I'm most proud of? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, when we talk about innovation and digitization, I think the, the number one innovation, and I cannot take credit for it, um, I have an amazing tech team. So I think the most, um, uh, the, the best innovation was really the empowerment of anyone to create and the ability for people to really participate in that conversation, not just through hearing, but through building and through doing. And so the idea that anyone can literally download the app and create content that they want to share in social interactive ways is probably one of the innovations I'm most proud of because it's really disruptive 
the idea that I don't have to sit at my desk and create something. I can be in a taxi. It's more in the flow of work. And I can share that with my teams, but in a social interactive way, which is very empowering. And so, um, you know, grateful to my team uh, for, for doing that. Uh, I cannot take credit for that, but um, it's a co-creation process. Thanks, uh, So Young, for, for those uh, insights. I mean, we, we, we actually have uh, a question. It's a two-part question uh, sure. in, the, in the chat on, on our platform. I'm going to modify the first part of that question um, because it, it starts off by asking, well, okay, so learning and development is not new, so what, what, is, what is different about micro-learning? Um, I, I know you've addressed part of that in, in your presentation, but I would... Um, as a from a conference standpoint, um, we we have two days of twenty minute presentations, and we have some interactive workshops and, and roundtables. But I'm I'm in, curious as to what you would do to to mix up the conference uh, experience to uh, to make things into more uh, bite size type of uh, type of chunks. Yeah, no, it's a great question. In fact, um, you know, during COVID last year we basically were innovating you know and struggling with the same kind of thing of webinars and people were getting zoom fatigued and so we basically started nobifying everything and when i mean nobify it was basically we put it into this format and then we would share the links in advance and to really be much more adaptive and personalized some people um are want to just sit back and be ent entertained you know, by the conference, and that's totally fine. While they mm -hmm. drink their coffee, right? Um, and that, that's one type of a, of, a, of a person. You have other people who really want to be actively engaged and share their questions and comments, get access to the content. So then those people would then engage in polls and, and have the content at their fingertips so that they could share that then with their colleagues or those who could not attend the conference. And then there were other people who would have their aha moment, moments two weeks later and then would mm -hmm. basically continue to share and have that conversation. So I think this idea of being able to extend the conference or extend the conversation beyond 20 minutes, which is really challenging to really retain a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I think at best you try to tickle some ideas and tickle, and if you get one or two good quotes out of it, that's a successful um, engagement. Mm -hmm. And so you know it's really moving it beyond that. Um, and then also creating a little bit more longevity in that content. So we have webinars and things we've done last year that people are still engaging in six months later. And so I think the idea of being able to kind of have that content there that people can engage with, which is why, you know, my team and I literally that thing I just shared with you, I could have done a PowerPoint deck and that took me 15 minutes to do. Mm. So uh, yeah. actually what, some of the things you're talking about have their equivalence in in what we describe in the in the technical area so you talk about breaking down um these uh thing, things into bite-sized chunks and in the in the technology area we we talk about breaking down a monolith into lots of microservices and being able to componentize things and make them a little more granular and then people can mix and match the, the services or the or the pieces that they that they need to um, uh, to to achieve their their purpose or their their unique uh, journey. So that's um, that's a, that's a great insight. Um, the the other part of that question was a little more technical, and I'm not sure um, what um, I, I'm not sure how to frame this exactly because the question is about well how how might APIs change things for for Nobi. Um, yeah. I think um, a couple of things spring to mind. I mean, you know, you probably work with partners and how you integrate with them. So yep. can you perhaps um, discuss that a little bit? No, it's, it's critical. You know, and I think that the slide, I was, the, the, the screen I was sharing with all the multi, multiple apps and things, and even what I was just demonstrating with everyone was really the linkage, you know, between Nobi and Google Drives and Google Slides and web links and all these different things. Mm -hmm. Um, was in, was basically showing, um, you know, the power of integration and connectivity across apps and across systems. So it's an absolutely critical part of our strategy that it's not, you know, we're not going to try to be everything to everyone, and then mm -hmm. the behemoth system that you have to implement. 
you know, you might have an existing LMS system, whether it's SAP success factors or, you know, or, or whatever. And then we will have the API that connects the Nobi experience with SAP. So they're one of our big partners, you know, and then creating, you know, kind of different, um, you know, across the entire employee lifecycle from single sign on all the way to the, the downloading of the app or the experience to then taking that data, feeding the data back into an L another kind of system. We're working on in, um, API integrations with Salesforce, with Seismic. So those are other types of integration. So as we think about what's possible as you integrate and not try to recreate, but take the best of the different systems, mm -hmm. APIs are absolutely critical. And, um, and we're also seeing now, I would say compared to a couple of years ago, um, now almost like all of our major clients ask for some level of API integration. So I think for those who are joining this conference, um, I think it's a happy days um, because I think it's really now the idea of the connected ecosystem as opposed to the one behemoth system. Mm, thanks, thanks very much for that, um, for answering both parts of that, uh, that, that, that question. Uh, it, was a, it was a great question. I have, there is another question in the, in the chat. Um, about content development. I mean, you, you've illustrated some some ways of simplifying that, but yeah. um, the um, the the ability to accelerate um, the the development of content and uh, and then the the sharing of that. Um, what um, what do you see uh, improving in the way of uh, of tools or just guidance or new ways of, of working for that? Sure. I think we need to be much more agile and um, let go a little bit of the reins of content creation and dissemination in an organization, which requires trust and requires new capabilities. It requires new mindsets. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen because sharing and is always uh, better than telling so i'm a very big i used to be a teacher i don't know if you can tell um but i would do experiential workshops because i don't like talking at people and i'd rather share so just to give a, an example you know uh, empowering people with digital tools that allow them to really create edit and then create new content as we go and i, I think what i'm showing you is basically the power of designing technology it says hi everyone welcome to api days and being it says, hi everyone and then being able to do that at speed at scale whether it's from your laptop or from your phone on multiple devices i think this is really you know what i what i get very very excited about um because it's not a technology challenge it's a mindset challenge and so if we can get people into the mindset that not one person is the creator of content and the publisher of that content. And I'm done, right? So now everyone who's in this conference can see that. Um, and the idea that it's the democratization of that content creation, you know, which I think is, um, is kind of what we're talking when we talk about empowering people to create. Um, and and that, I think that's quite a different mindset, to be honest. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, it, it demonstrates a, an ability to, to create content um, simply and, and a little bit more interactively. Um, I, there, there is another question that sort of leads on to that, um, is how to maintain the focus um, and the quality of the resultant uh, content. Because if it's so easy to create, then how, how do you make sure that um, the, the content is accurate? How, in in governance. technology circles, yeah. we talk about governance and governance. a review yeah. process and things like that. So completely the same. So I think that the, that's why when I think about technology, technology, you know, I think is it should be designed. It enhances human life. You know, it, it doesn't really it doesn't fully replace all things. So I think there's still a role for human decision making and for governance for um, decisions around context quality etc and so i think the governance piece is obviously very important so as you're creating the content you know you don't disseminate it as you would you know to ten thousand employees without having a qc process just like you would a powerpoint presentation or a word document um you, you just would just take that same technology or that digital content 
and then take you through a very, very similar governance process around authority levels, QCing, et cetera. And also it depends on the, the level of importance of that content. You know, people who use Slack, maybe that's not as urgent. You know, so in Slack, I'm having a conversation with you, discussing things with you, and maybe that doesn't have to be QC'd. That would severely impact, you know, the speed of work if every message had to be QC'd. And, and similarly, some PowerPoint presentations are just, you know, us sharing it, just like some Novi programs are just sharing, or sometimes mm -hmm. they have to be uh, QC'd and checked depending on the level of the severity, the scale, and scope. Same, I think so, same. So is, so, is, so is a balancing act, much like Absolutely. any other activity, um, you make it too tight and people are inhibited from, from sharing, make it too loose and, and you end up with quality problems. But yeah, okay, this uh, balanced approach is, uh, is important. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, Sergio, for, for sharing that. I think we're all uh, excited about how we can improve our interactions in, in the digital environment. And, uh, and you've set us up for, for a great uh, conference. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, John, and uh, have a great conference.